We're back with another video tutorial here, and in this one we are going to learn about code sharing. So uh, Unity doesn't allow you to use file references for some reason uh, beyond my comprehension. So if you had uh, one script that you used in say two or three projects, you would actually have to copy it to each one. And if you then fixed a bug in that script, you would have to remember to go back to the other two projects and modify that script. It's a terrible way to maintain code and it's completely error prone. So we're going to learn two different ways that we can uh, actually share code between projects. Now they're both going to use DLL, so it's just going to be two different ways to create those DLLs. And uh, one of them is going to be in Unity and the other one will be using a separate mono develop project. Uh, you can do this however you want. Uh, I personally use a separate mono develop project, but uh, sometimes it's handy to just have another Unity project that you can use as well. That way you can actually test that code before you create the DLL. So what we have here is an editor script. So in essence, this is also uh, going to be uh, a, a small addition to the editor scripting tutorial series because we're going to learn about a, a quickie little editor script here. So like, uh, like uh, we've seen in the past, our editor script uh, just uh, extends the editor class and we have a menu item here. And uh, you can look this up in the documentation to see um, all the available parameters here. Uh, now by default, just sticking a string in there will create this menu item and then this sub item. But you also have other options where, uh, for instance, uh, is validate function. So that's, uh, if that, you make it, if you um, if you have a menu with a string in it, and then you have another menu item, for example, with the same string, has to be the exact same string but true. You could then do something like this. So that way, by returning false, uh, Unity is going to disable the menu item, and we can actually see this in action here. So you can see that this is actually false now. So that's uh, this is actually disabled. So if you wanted this to actually do something semi-useful, we can uh, just do something like this. So the validate function will return, we want it to return true when there are selected objects, and false when there are no selected objects. So let's go over here, select nothing, and ooh, actually that won't work as is because that's selecting no objects. So we actually would have to do a little bit of filtering to actually do this right. And I mean, I guess we'll do it just for illustration purposes. So I'm just gonna do a quick loop through the selected objects. And what we want to do is if one of the selected objects is a monoscript, uh, monoscript is uh, the type for any scripts that you have in your project then we'll return true, otherwise we return false. So before we were just, if any object was selected, it was returning true, which doesn't make sense for a compiler like the, that we're gonna be building here, a little DLL compiler. So now we can see that that is uh, not active, and now it is. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's, uh, let's actually look at the code here. Uh, actually, we won't go over this because it's not really all that important. Uh, this is just using the, the C-sharp compiler, uh, and Unity has a, has a handy compiler parameters class that lets you uh, create all your parameters and then pass them along to the C-sharp code provider. Uh, you can read through the docs if you want to learn about that, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it's really what it's doing isn't that important. Uh, it's, it's the actual DLL creation that we're looking at. So um, we set up some compiler parameters here and we set up a reference to the Unity engine. And right here is where we grab our source code. So it calls uh, this get source for selected scripts. And this does that same loop we just saw a second ago. We go through, we grab anything that's of type monoscript, and we just add the, that actual value to our list of source code. And uh, the toString method on a monoscript object actually just spits out the, uh, the entirety of the file. So we don't have to bother uh, messing around with uh, opening, reading the file, and putting it in there. And then we return uh, when we return it, we return two array because uh, the compile assembly from source method requires it to be an array. And then what we do is we do the compilation. We check for any errors. If there are any errors, we just dump them to the console. 
And uh, I'll show you an example of when that would be useful. And another uh, thing to make note of here is we just, the build target file name, I just called it some fancy DLL. And uh, you can change this to anything you want. You could make a UI for this, for example, uh, using editor scripting and, and be able to type the name in. Lots of different options, but uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just leave it like this and uh, we're gonna dump it to uh, the desktop. Okay, so we go over here and let's select, I'm gonna select something that's gonna cause an error on purpose. So let's select this, this debugging UI script actually requires this Descript. So I'm only gonna select this one and let's run it. And you can see we get a bunch of errors. And we take a look here, we could say the name D does not exist in the current context. And that's you know expected because we didn't select the Descript. So if we select both of them, we do create DLL and we get a little pop-up saying the DLL is now on the desktop. And uh, sure enough, it is on the desktop. Can see it right here. So you'd then be able to just uh, take that and stick it in any of your other projects. If you uh, if you wanted to do this even more efficiently, instead of just uh, outputting that file to your desktop, what you can do is after the file is created, so the DLL exists when we're here, and it exists. Uh, we we know the exact path that it exists at as well because we created it right here. So if you wanted to, uh, you can just take that DLL and copy it into all of your Unity projects that use that DLL. And that's something that I personally do because uh, it just, anytime a new project uh, gets created and it's going to need some of the shared code, the first thing I do is go to my shared code builder and just add it in there. And then anytime you, you uh, go ahead and do your build, it'll spit that DLL into your project. Okay, so that's method one of doing this. Uh, method number two is using uh, a separate mono develop project and again this is my preference but whatever works for you uh, you can uh, this is just a library project so all I did is uh, you know file new solution and create a library and this is the class that it sticks in there by default my class I just stuck an extra method in here and uh, the, the big difference here is I added a post build script and here's the post build script and this will be available on github if you want to grab it uh, just like all the other uh, tutorials in the past, and it's in the learning units is the name of the GitHub repo. And uh, again, going into this script isn't all that important. It's just a, a silly little Python script that uh, takes in a root folder and then takes in destination destination projects. And uh, the reason for that is uh, just my workflow. I have a single root folder, and I have a whole bunch of projects in that folder. So... Uh, I can then just go over here and say any project required, I just stick here. And this will automatically loop through those destination projects and uh, copy the DLL on build. And uh, you can do this any way you want. If you wanted to, you can just hard code full paths for each of your projects. Uh, this is just a, a convenient way to do it. Uh, so basically all this is going to do is uh, grab the source file which MonoDevelop provides to us in the command line argument. Grab the name of that file, which MonoDevelop also provides to us, and then loop through the folders, and uh, we just delete the file if it exists, and then copy the file. And you'll notice in here there's some syslog stuff, and uh, this is just for debugging. For uh, you know, If your DLL is not getting copied or something, uh, this will dump everything to uh, the standard console. Uh, available on OSX. So now we have the script here, but we need to actually call it. So uh, the way that gets done is we just select the project and in options you'll see here there's custom commands. And uh, you can add as many custom commands as you want. So these are the operations you can do. Uh, for our particular case, we want to do an after build. So I have this set for release only. So if you see debug, it's not going to do anything. So only release builds will actually run this. And then we just call the script and we say Python post build and pass in these two things, which is the target file and the target name. And uh, you can actually, uh, if you look at the modern develop documentation, there's a list of them, but there's also a bunch right here. And you can just pick what you, if you need anything specific uh, to be passed over to that script. So in this case, the target file is the first parameter, which 
over here, source file, and then target name is the second, so that's our file name. So that's all there is to it. So now uh, anytime we do a release build, it will actually copy that over. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, well first let me show you over here. You can see the plugins folder is empty. So if I go back here and do a rebuild, we can see build successful. And I have a console open over here and I'm filtering for the word builder. So you can uh, actually, you can see it's the all messages log. You can see the, the two logs here. So we have starting post process and then we have, uh, it spits out every directory or every, every location that it copies the files to. And that's just uh, these calls here, syslog.syslog. So let's hop back over here. And sure enough, there's our DLL. All right, that's it for this tutorial. So uh, I'm going to push these to the GitHub repo. So you, if you want to grab them, you can use them as templates for your projects. But uh, now you know how to share code between projects until the day when Unity finally allows us to add file references. Thanks for watching.